I'm The same things. So I, some people have been here for all of the seminars. I'm not sure if that's just. I wonder if it's just. Is it just my brother? Is it just? Do you think it's just for some people to come to all of them? Uh -huh. Do you think it's just my sister? Do you think it's just for people to come tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's just? No. See, we've been having seminars. This is the third one. And some people have come to all three. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you if you think that is just. Yeah. You think it's just. Does anybody think it's unjust? Do you think it's unjust, my brother? Why? And really think that, that one has to put some stuff discipline in order for the masses to get the equal opportunity to come. Uh, did you hear? Yeah. Miss my brother. I think it's just like if the people who have attended all three like spread what they have learned. Uh, if not, then it's unjust. Okay. Do you accept that, my brother? Yeah. All right. So then all those people who've been here for more than three, I'm personally going to expect them, based on my political ideology, to do more work than all the other people. Because theory without practice is empty. Uh -huh. <coughs> there is a difference between a reform movement and a revolutionary movement. There's a big difference. In a reform movement, one can take the foundation of a given structure and try it by keep, while keeping the same foundation to reform, to rebuild the structure. But you keep the same foundation. You don't change the foundation. You may knock down a door here, a wall there, or whatever, but you still believe that within the same system, you can get reform because X number of needs are not being met. A revolutionary movement is a movement which has decided that And as a matter of fact, his most important objective is building, not destroying. He will have to destroy while he builds. He will have to destroy while he builds. But he must not be so preoccupied with destroying that he does not build. He must be preoccupied with building. And if he's building correctly, he will be destroying. He has to destroy. There's a lot of destruction that must be done. He has to destroy. But building, building, building is what he's about. Building is what he's about. The reform movement, as we said, he ain't about building. The reform movement, he's not about building. He's about remodeling. He's about remodeling. He's going to remodel. He's not going to rebuild. You must understand. So if you talk about revolution, you're talking about building. If you talk about building, you're talking about destroying foundations and creating new foundations. New foundations. And so you have to destroy all of this, not only materially, but also philosophically and ideologically. Otherwise, you will be remodeling. You may be remodeling. Now, when you remodel, because the cat who's building, see, he's coming out with new stuff. Right on, he's coming out with new stuff. He's going to come out with stuff like black power and black pride, you understand? Because that's what he's building. So the cat who's trying to remodel, when he sees a cat who's building talking about black power and black pride, he's going to jump over there and start yelling black power and black pride, but trying to remodel, <laughs> understand? He's not trying to build. He's going to take black power and black pride and try to bring it in the same foundation to remodel. Because black pride look good, black power look good. 
So he's going to try and snatch it and bring it in the same old house and remodel it. He might call it black capitalism. Whatever. Man, black, is the, black is the thing that everybody's running for, but black is the basis of the new building. It's not remodeling. It's building. So by definition, our struggle is revolutionary. It is revolutionary. We cannot remodel America. We cannot remodel it. We can only destroy it. Uh, a lot of people are talking about this revolutionary movement in America. And I spoke to a young sister here who's a freshman on Howard's campus about the movements, the activities on Howard's campus. And I asked her, was there any kind of, of a movement in reference to not going back to Africa to stay, but purchasing land in Africa, trying to gather up students in all the different fields and programs here at Howard University who can build mm -hmm. and try to set up some kind of a community or something. And the reason why I ask this is because America is so polluted. Yes, my sister, please, before we get to the tactics, let's get to the ideology. Because if we agree on principles, then we can argue about the tactics. Okay. All right, all right. Because we don't want the people to go there unless they have the correct ideology. The whole lot of brothers got a lot of skills in this country. But their skills are being used for themselves, not for their people, because they do not have the correct ideology. They have philosophies which are characteristic of this system, the system we are about to destroy. And thus, before we even send them out, we must make sure that we are all working on the same wavelength. That some of not, are not saying black power and black pride to try and remodel America, but really, in fact, to try and build Africa. That's all. OK. All right. This country is a capitalist society. Mm hmm Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Leader of world imperialism. Yes, it is. I am against capitalism. I'm totally opposed to capitalism. The only way that there can be world peace is with the complete destruction of capitalism. Now, I can't tell you in all the time we have what capitalism is, but I can give you some of the basic characteristics of capitalism. And we can discuss that and then move on. Because I want to be sure that you and I are working from the same definitions. Not that we're agreeing, but just working from the same definitions. If we do that, then we can disagree logically. Capitalism is a system which is based on exploitation. 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 It cannot function unless it exploits. It must exploit in order to function. It must. Under the system of capitalism, capital and labor are always in conflict. Capital and labor are always in conflict. And capital and labor are always in conflict because the motivating force for the capitalist system is profit. 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 The capitalist system accepts and respects conflict of interest. inside its system. Not only do they accept conflict of interest, but they respect it. They adore it. They make it sacred. They make it sacred. They make it sacred. My spelling is bad. Individualistic. Mm -hmm. Capitalism is very individualistic. These are some of the basic characteristics of capitalism. I can't, I wish we, why aren't y'all, that white man got some of these things where you don't need these cords, don't he? Love thee, brother? Yeah. Oh, you gotta catch up with him, surpass him. But that's all right, it's for our people, so we can do it like this, right? Okay, we can work harder for our people. Right I hear you, all right. We say that the capitalist system is a system based on exploitation because in the capitalist system, 
Capital is what counts, and capital is money, 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 money. That's capital, money, money, money. And in capitalism, a few people own and control the means of production. When we say the means of production, when we say the means of production, we mean anything that is produced, the, all the machinery necessary to produce something. So the means of production would be a factory where you have the machinery to produce your manufactured goods. You would find under the means of production the control of the resources necessary. And of course, the labor, because labor is very important. Without labor, your resources, your factory ain't going to go nowhere. <laughs> it ain't going to go nowhere. You got to have labor to put it together. In a capitalist society, only a few people, a very, very few people, own and control the means of production. Everybody else works for them. Everybody else works for them. Everybody else must sell their labor to these capitalists. Everybody else. Even those who get very big, big jobs. Very big, big jobs. They still work for the capitalists. <laughs> they still work for the capitalists. You hear me? <laughs> now, the capitalists, he give them a lot of money compared to the people down here. Make no mistake about it. But he's still working for the capitalists, you understand? And he's so stupid that he don't recognize he's working for the capitalists. He thinks he's a capitalist. <laughs> That's how stupid he is, right? Yeah. He really thinks he's a capitalist. And even if he ain't a capitalist, he thinks he can become a capitalist. You hear me? He thinks he can become a capitalist. Now, the people down here, no, ain't no chance for them to become no capitalists. But some of them think they can become capitalists. Some of them think they can become capitalists. Some of them think so because that's the only thing they've been exposed to. It's the only thing they've been exposed to. They know there are contradictions. They see the contradictions. They see the problems. They're always behind in rent. But somehow they keep feeling that they can make it. They keep feeling that they can make it. And they keep feeling that they can make it because this is prevalent. This is prevalent. You can make it as an individual. You can make it if you try. You, you can, you can. You can become a doctor, a lawyer, anything. You can become a millionaire. You can, individually. So these people believe that individually. Of course, when they try, they're always blocks. They're contradictions. They're contradictions. And as they get up, maybe they become more aware. Somebody who gets to this level finds out that what they were saying isn't true. So maybe he stops there. But somebody may never get to this level, so they believe in capitalism. So they believe in it. So we must be able to examine it carefully and explain it to people why it ain't no good. Why it ain't no good. Like we say, all these people work for the capitalist because all the profits come back to the capitalist, and he keeps them. He keeps them for himself. Let me give you an example. This is a shirt factory. I'm a capitalist. You're my workers. You work for me. I got a little country somewhere where I'm getting cotton from. I bring it here, I've got a factory. You take my cotton, you manufacture it, and you make it a shirt. And from that shirt, I get my money. So let's say that, for example, I buy my cotton for 50 cents. It costs me 50 cents to bring my cotton and ship it into the country. I pay you a dollar for each shirt you make. I sell the shirt for $8. Cost me $1.50. fifty. Oh, I forgot something. I'm sorry. For the upkeep of my machinery, it may cost me fifty cents, even less, because it's very cheap. I already got my machinery. All I gotta do is keep it oiled and greased, etc., 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 etc. So maybe it costs me that much for upkeep. All right, so that's two dollars. I still sell the shirt for eight dollars. I make six dollars profit. I have done nothing. I have done nothing. Nothing. I didn't pick the cotton. I didn't help ship the cotton. I, didn't, I don't even come in my factory. I have an overseer in my factory. I give him a lot of money. I call him general manager. But all his job is to make sure that everybody else is working. That's all. That's all. Now, he may change his tactics on how to get people work. At first, he might have to hit them with a whip, you understand, to make them work. But then people start getting hip to that. So he's got to change his tactics. So maybe tell him, hey, man, you can make it like me up here if you work hard. See? He's changed tactics. 
<laughs> but he's doing the same thing, making you work hard for nothing, for him. He's changed tactics. Changed tactics, but the exploitation continues. It continues. There's never any progress over the question of exploitation. There's just changes. The man changes, but the exploitation continues. Because a capitalist society, by its very nature, must exploit. Must. Can. Has to. Because I'm, I'm you're working. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing, man. You're working, and I take all the money. And when you want to buy a shirt, you got to buy a shirt from me for $8. <laughs> Get to that. You got to buy a shirt from me for eight dollars. For eight dollars. The shirt that you made. It must exploit. It has to exploit because its cornerstone is what is known as private property. And that's sacred, man. Private property is sacred. You understand? And you must understand the concept of private property, even from the history of this country, man. They took this land. They killed the red man to get this land, and it's their private property. So any way you get private property, you get it as long as you get it. But once you get it, everybody gonna respect you for getting it. That's capitalism. That's capitalism. You can get it any way you get it, but once you get it, we're gonna respect you because you got it. You can kill a whole nation and take it. But once you get it, it will be respected as private property. It is an evil system. It is a barbaric system. It is a politically backward system. It is a system that breeds its very destruction. That is how backward it is. It goes so fast backward that it breeds its own destruction. Private property. Thus, private property supports the concept of individualism. This is mine. This is mine. That's what the capitalist hollers all the time. This is my factory. This is my country. I took it from the red boy. I killed him for it. It's mine. I've got it. It's mine. This is mine. Individualistic feeling. This is mine. This is mine. This is my house. This is my store. This is mine. And thus, when you have everybody trying to be my, this is mine, there's got to be conflict. There's got to be conflict. There's got to be conflict. Because everybody fighting to get, there's only so much. There got to be conflict. Got to be conflict. Just understand capitalism, then you get to the other one, all right? Because before you destroy it, you have to understand why it must be destroyed. Do you know why it must be destroyed? Why? Finish the discussion. Well, I understand what you're saying so far. Okay, well, there's more. Because when I get through with you, I want you to understand it must be destroyed. Give me a chance. And you just talk with me. I'm not going to tell you do it because I say so, but I want you to understand why you will have to do it, even if I say so or not. Because logic will make you. All right? We said that in a capitalist society, there's capital versus labor. Because there's always conflict. I'm always trying to make more money off of your labor. I'm always trying to make more money off of your labor, because you are the one who's producing. I will always try to cut costs, everything possible, but always to make money off of your labor. And they are always in conflict, always in conflict, conflict, constant conflict. There are strikes, picket lines, slowdown, work downs. All of these things are characteristic of a capitalist society, because labor and capital are always in conflict. In order to get out of this conflict, they're very stupid, you know, they really are. In order to get out of this conflict, they create a spiral system, what is called as a spiral economy system. For example, you my workers, you're getting a dollar for each shirt you make. You see I'm selling them for eight dollars. Now you come to me and say, hey, look here, man, we want more than a dollar. We want a raise in our wages. Well, you don't tell me, because you can't see me. I'm the capitalist, you tell my general manager. And he come and see me, he said, look here, man, the, the workers say they, gonna, they want some more money. So I said, oh, man, tell them they ain't getting no more money. So he goes back, he says, hey, man, y'all ain't getting no more money. Then you all start organizing. You all organize, you all come up with a union, you all say, give me some money or we strike. So my manager comes back, he says, they say, give me some money or say strike. I said, oh, man, leave them alone. Don't give them no money. Forget them. Then you all go on strike. He said, while you all go on strike, I'm losing money. All right, I'm losing money. 
me, I can't lose no money because I'm in this for profit. <laughs> you know, I can't lose nothing. Right? So we argue and argue and argue. Finally, y'all say, yeah, all right, we come back to work. You got to give us a dollar fifty. All right, I give y'all a dollar fifty. So now it costs me two fifty to produce a shirt. Hey, but now I got to do something to recover my losses. <laughs> I got to recover, and ain't no need to recover at the same amount I last had. I might as well jack it all the way up. Right on. So I'm going to tell you, right on. Now when you go to the market, you're going to pay me $10. Right on. And it keeps going. <laughs> it's going to reach the top, and the sky going to blow. Got to. Got to. Got to. They keep. But at the, and the, the funny thing, man, is at the same time they're going, they're making the products cheaper. So they can make more money. It costs less to make a new car today than it did in 1933, and it costs you more to buy it. And the car is a cheaper product. It's terrible, man. You just touch it, it dents. Right on, man. He's just making them, putting them out there. He wants his money. In a capitalist society, it is money which comes first and not people which comes first. That's why it is barbaric. Totally barbaric. How can, in a system, money take priority over people? Sekutere says that it is not money which creates man. It is man which creates money. Thus, it is only logical that man must control money. How can money control man? As Frankenstein, you make something that you can't control. Only a fool would do that. Barbaric. There is no thought of the people. And since there is no thought of the people, communism is an unplanned society. Capitalism is an unplanned society. What did I say? Oh, no, sorry. Capitalism. I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> Capitalism is an unplanned economy. Unplanned. Very chaotic. Very chaotic. Because all they want is money. Hey, look here, man. Um, when I was in the country, uh, I was driving around New York uh, a couple of, about a month ago or so. I was driving around New York. And uh, i just come back from, from Guinea, you know? And uh, we didn't have many cars there. When I got on the highway, man, I went crazy. I've never seen so many cars, man. They're just cars. They're just cars. And when we go to visit somebody, I can't find a parking space, man. I got to park about four blocks and walk back, you understand? Even here in D.C., man, last night, I looked 15 minutes for parking space, man. I timed it. 15 minutes for one parking space in D.C. There's so many cars here. And dig this. Next year, the white boy gonna sell more cars than he sold this year. <laughs> See how crazy he is? Where you gonna put him? Who gonna suffer? The people. Bumping into each other, going nowhere. Rushing to get here. He okay, he's selling you cars. <laughs> and he makes it so you got to buy cars. He sabotages the public transportation, man. You got to buy cars. And while he owns the cars, he also owns the gasoline. He also he's jacking up the prices. And everything. Unplanned society. And when you see them building new roads, you say, hey man, look here, they're building some new roads. Things are gonna be all right, but you don't know they're building new roads for the new cars that are coming. <laughs> no place. Unplanned. Every aspect of it. This society pulls out the suicidal tendencies in one rather than repress them. You get on the highway and you're driving about 60 miles an hour. There are all these signs, man, and cars are coming from you from each side. And if you stop, they're blowing you. Pop, pop. Nervous running. Just want to put the foot on the gas and shoot out. Pulls out the suicidal tendencies. It's a disgusting society, man. Only barbarians could actually accept this type of society. Yeah. It is a society based on greed. What I want, I get. Even if I kill for it, it's all right. That's the only ethic in this society. It is repressed to certain levels, but on a governmental level, that's how it's done. The only reason America can't get into Vietnam is because the Vietnamese won't let them. But if the Vietnamese would let them, you think they wouldn't be there? They'd be right there because they had the power and the might to do it. The power and the might to do it. It's unplanned. We said there's always conflict of interest. They have lobbies, labor lobby, management lobby, this lobby. And they accept these lobbies, man. They accept it. 
Because they say, look here, man, there's a pie. There's a big pie. And whatever you can get from it, it's yours. That's what it is, man, and they accept it. So the labor lobby, he gonna come in, he gonna try and corrupt, cause it's not, it's not what, what counts is how much you got. How much you got? So the labor lobby, he gonna pay off all the congressmen to get this slice. Somebody else gonna pay off to get this slice, this slice. And the poor unorganized people, they ain't get nothing. They ain't get nothing. They don't get nothing. And they accept it. And they even have the people saying, yeah, man, it's OK to have some conflict. It's good. The labor gonna fight management. That nonsense, man. If you're in the same society, why do you want conflict of interest? That makes no sense. What you want is togetherness so the whole country can go forward. If you're all fighting each other, can't go nowhere. Can't go nowhere. Conflict of interest. <clears throat> and this can lead to warfare. Capitalism. It ain't no good. Y'all take my word for it, but read something about it. This is not the whole structure of a capitalist system. It cannot be. It's only a few characteristics because of the time we have. Just a few. Just a few. Now, if you have any questions on capitalism, we can do that now. My brother. I can't hear you, please. Oh, oh yeah, right. Thank you. You know, maybe we can, get, we can get to that later, after socialism. Because it'd be better with communalism. Right. Thank you. Yes, my brother. Uh-huh. 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 That's very important, brother. That's very important. Thank you. Hey, you know, in the 30s, when the labor unions, you know, they showing up, they, they, the white workers now, he was really feeling it, you understand? And he saw that uh, the white boy was making the capitalists, he was making a whole lot of money. So the labor unions, they said, well, we got to get together and do something about this. So they got together, you understand? But look at their thinking is so capitalistic that they didn't want revolution, they wanted reform. They got together and they said to him, give me a bigger piece of the pie. They didn't say to him, redistribute the wealth that is here amongst us, give me a bigger piece of the pie. I don't care how you get it, just give it to me. You understand? Now this capitalist, he's not about to cut down on his profits. Not about to do that. Not about to do that. So when the man said, give me more piece of pie, he started to look all over the world. Africa, Asia, and Latin America. He just started reaching in there and bam, taking it, bringing it back, taking a whole lot and squeezing the crumbs to the labor union. And they were licking it up. But it was off the sweat of Africa, Asia, and Latin America that the white unions are now making their money. So they weren't even left to begin with. They just wanted a piece of the pie. They wanted to remodel the system, that's all. They want to remodel. They want to put up some more rooms. And that's what they did, they remodeled. But the foundation remained intact. 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 Wasn't even scratched, wasn't even a niche on it. It didn't even shake. Because it just reached out. Africa, Asia, Latin America, brought more, had more profits, and it had more profits and gave the labor unions that much. Now, they said not there. They said not there. Well, yes, sir. How, how can you, uh, how do you explain the concept Well, we're going to get to that because we've been having some problems on it the last other two. Yeah, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Any other questions on capitalism? And now, as I told you, I don't want you now to leave the room and take my word that this is what capitalism is about. You're students. You're students. And you can read, you know. And while you're here at your university, you should at least work for your people, you know. And by working for your people, it means at least understanding clearly the political implications of life, regardless of what your major is. Because there are many people who graduate from schools with skills and do not understand this and go out and work for it against their people. So you have a responsibility now for yourself and for those who come after you to change that type of lifestyle. And the only way you're going to do it is by working harder. Is by working harder. Time don't bring it. Time is neutral. Don't sit and say over time. No, time is neutral. 
If you sit in one place and you don't move, you be there time afterwards. But if you want to get from here to there within such a period of time, you've got to get up and walk. So work is what counts. So that means you've got to work harder. And I ask you to at least try and read something on capitalism. Try and read something on it so that you understand it completely, thoroughly, and discuss it. And discuss it, all right? We say we want to destroy capitalism. In its place, we want socialism. Don't get hung up on the word. Let's get the concepts. Let's get the concepts. <clears throat> In socialism, there is no private property. None. None. The land is for everybody. The land is for everybody. When everybody came here, did nobody have no land, so thus the land must belong to everybody. The profits from the land is for everybody. Thus everybody works, and everybody divides the profits. There is no private property. There is no few people who own and control the means of production. The means of production is owned and controlled by everybody. 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 Thus the profits are decided on how to disperse, the disbursement of the profits are decided by everybody. By everybody. By everybody. There are no few. There are no few. Everybody owns and controls the means of production. In socialism, there are no conflicts of interest. Because everybody has the same interest, the building of the nation for the benefit of its inhabitants. The better the, build, the, better the nation is, the better life I have. The better the nation is, the better life my children have. Yes, my brother. Thank you. No smoking at all. I hear you. Where was I? Ah, uh, the nation, right. The better the nation is, the better the life of the individual and his people are. So that is to say that I cannot assume that if my nation is poor and I have a big house, I'm going to be somewhere. That makes no sense. I can never rise above my people. I can never rise above my people. <coughs> and if I have a nice big house, but my country don't have good roads, and I have a big car, it ain't going to do me no good. It ain't going to do me no good. The only way I can become better is when my nation becomes better. Thus, in socialism, one is concerned with meeting the needs of the people, not with money, not with money. It is with meeting the needs of the people. So if ever there are conflicts, these conflicts can be easily resolvable by always saying, what we want to do is meet the needs of the people. At least we have an objective, a common objective, on which we can all agree. Thus, if we have tactical problems, we can reason out and scientifically see which one will have us arrive at our desired objective quickest and more efficiently. That is all. That is all. But under capitalism, when there are conflicts of interest, there is no desired objective except I want as much as I can get and you want as much as you can get. So there's no reasoning. And since it is sacred property, I can kill you and take it because I killed the red boy and took this, I can kill you too and take it. Kill you too and take it. No desired objective. Under socialism, the desired objective is the needs of the people. Thus it is a planned society. It must be planned. It must be planned. Everybody wants cars. Everybody wants big houses. Everybody wants this. That's true, but not everybody can have it at the same time because we don't have enough. Not everybody can have it at the same time because we don't have enough, but we got to bring it in. So some people will be having it. 
And the people must be so well educated that even if you don't get it, you ain't mad, but you're happy your brother got it because yours is coming soon. Can you dig it? That's a long way to travel, ain't it? Long way to travel. Imagine if you look, nice pair of pants, man, and you want it, want it, want it, then your brother get it, man. You gotta go say, hey, brother, man, I'm so happy you got it. And mean it. And mean it. And mean it. And then say, look here, man, I ain't worried because uh, it's coming soon. You know, Everybody gonna have more than that. So you can have it now. And I want you to look good in it because I helped make it for you. I want you to look good in it because I helped made it for you. That's socialism, man. That's deep, ain't it? Yes. And the only way you can find the roots of this socialism is in communalism, the African traditional society. Hmm. That's where you find its roots. <coughs> only in a society which upheld the sacredity of man could you find such a value system. You find the value system in the traditional African society known as communalism. Socialism is communalism in an industrial society. Under communalism, you have a system which is common in an agrarian society, a society where there's just agriculture. There's no industry. No industry, just agriculture. This is an agrarian society, and you have the values of communalism. The land belongs to nobody. Everybody works. Everybody harvests together. Everybody shares together. Under socialism, you have an industrial society, a little bit more complex. And you take the same values from communalism and bring them up to socialism. Are there any questions? No questions. My sister, you understand socialism? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, my sister. Because you haven't examined it. That's why it's not coming off. Once you examine it, everybody will have a common ideology. Agreed? Yeah, I think we're examining it incorrectly when we do try to get into some kind of analysis. I think our whole method of analysis must be incorrect. But then that's what I want to straighten out. What, what way do you subject that to analysis so that you can see? Scientific analysis. Scientific analysis, you observe it and you dissect it. And you participate in the observation and in the dissection. But clear observation, I mean, you know, uh, President Sekou Touré says in revolution there's no sentimentality. And most people think that means, well, if my brother or my mother or my sister do something wrong against the revolution, I shouldn't be afraid to kill them. Well, it means that. It doesn't only mean that. It means that when you're making analysis, you must remove all sentimentality. Only coal science comes on the table. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Just coal science. We can do it, man, because you know Africans, we're a scientific people. We are, man. Look here. We build the pyramids, and he can't figure out how to do it, and he going to the moon. Well, there. We're scientific people. We gave the world medicine, astronomy, astrology, physics, mathematics. 
We're very scientific people. We'll do it very easily. Absolutely. Correctly. And so in order for us to educate, we must know that we're all working from the same principles, the same premises. So we're giving the same education. The problem is that you have one person giving one education, another person giving another education, another one, but you don't have people who have discussed and sit down and are coming up with the same, even the same principles around which you can discuss. But you don't have it. I mean, it seems that in these groups, the discussion of women, discussion of the role of the women, plays an important role. But they haven't even decided what their objective is. Well, how are they going to decide what the woman is, man? How are you going to decide what your mother going to do, man? Can you decide what your mother, your mother going to do what she's supposed to do? How are you going to decide that, man? How are you going to put your mother to walk behind you? That doesn't make no sense. I understand that. One other thing, Brother Stuff, I think later too, that whenever we have a lecture like this, one sits and thinks. But I think. It's important to know that there aren't concert lectures like this. This isn't something that goes on continuously. So we aren't bombarded with it continuously. And further... And that's what we must do. Right, I agree. And, I mean, it's not something that we get this lecture today and go outside with the social, socialist tomorrow. I understand. I mean, it's something that has to constantly go on. I understand. But, if I may, I think after we sit in sessions such as these, on a day-to-day -day basis, we must constantly analyze what we do for consistency Thank you. with the idea. Uh, can you tell me uh, how correct the dialectical analysis of history is as it relates to capitalism? It is correct. It's correct. We should go over that. basis of socialism is dialectical materialism, which says that, it says many things, but one of the basic things we can deal with is it says that when you have in any given object, you always have negative and positive forces which are in constant contradiction, or rather, no, no, they don't say negative and and positive. They just say you have opposing forces. They say you have opposing forces. And they say these opposing forces are always in constant conflict with each other. Constantly in conflict. Constantly in conflict until something is resolved after they fight. And that which is resolved is a new thing. And then this goes on constant conflict, constant conflict, constant conflict. You understand? That's the basis of it. It's the correct basis. In everything, they're opposites. Because nothing is static. Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. But one thing we know about life is that change is possible. Not only possible, it is permanent. It is permanent. Malcolm X changed from a Negro pimp who would sell his woman to a black revolutionary who would kill to protect them. Anybody can change. I mean, he sure enough changed. I'm not, I'm not talking about rhetoric change, like a whole lot of other people out here talking about rhetoric change because they come from prison. I'm talking about a brother who's shown enough changed and became a respected leader. So everything changes. This table changes, man. It's in constant, permanent change. If we leave it here for a number of years, it will diminish because there's constant, constant, constant internal movement of these opposing forces. And that's how all changes come about, all of them. Now, I am an encrumist. That is my ideology. I am an encrumist. And the basis of my 
my philosophical idea, my, the, philo the, my, the basis of my philosophical statement is dialectical materialism. But Osagifo went a step further. He said that in all of these things, they are negative and positive. They are negative and positive. And he said that these negatives and these positives constantly wage struggle against each other, wage struggle against each other. I am an incrumist. My job is to examine all of these entities, see the positive and the negative, collect the positive and add it to another positive and add it to another positive until the positives knocks down the negative. Now I know I will never get rid of the negative. I cannot do that because there must be opposing forces in each thing. But I can reduce the negative to a controllable insignificance. And there's positive and negative in everything. And you can apply it always constantly to your daily life. Like, for example, uh, Superfly. I went to see Superfly. I didn't see Sweetback. I was in Africa, but I heard about it. Heard all everybody I met, man. I mean, a brother. Man, you know what they're doing now? They're pushing down what they're doing, brother. What's it about? Man, this cat, it's just sex and drugs and sleeping with white women. And then in the end, he beats up this cop and he's running. I said, he's running? He said, yeah. I said, does he beat him up? He said, yeah. I said, he offs him? He said, he offs him. I said, what else? He said, he's running. Uh -huh. I said, that's good. I said, that's good. Because we never, we never beat him. All the other movies, we never beat him. He always comes out on top. So for the sex and the dope, there's still a positive, very positive attribute. We beat him. So young kids looking at it knows he is not invincible. He can be beaten. Even if you got to run after you beat him. You understand? Then I saw Superfly. Now Superfly had the same thing, less dope, less sex. But after, the, after he offs the policeman, the brother walks slowly into a hog and drives away. I said, yeah, we progressing. We ain't running no more. We driving hogs. <laughs> yes. There's positive progress. We can beat them and walk into a hog and drive away. There's progress. And it is very positive. It is a very positive aspect. Because all the talk going around is that nobody can beat the man and get away. If you're revolutionary and you're still alive, now he ain't revolutionary because he's beating the man and ma making it. You're not supposed to do that. If you're bad, you got to be in jail. If you ain't in jail, you ain't bad. If you ain't dead, you ain't bad. That's how negative the thinking is. So with sex and dope, we get over it. We can beat him. He ain't invincible and keep getting up. We know dope is going out of our community anyway. We know that. It's going. People going to push it out. That ain't no problem. We know that. If you study carefully and understand what's going on, through a scientific analysis, you will know dope is going out to the community. Even historically, you'll know it. The white boy gave the Chinese opium. Opium, man. Opium. Opium. And look here. They took it, grew strong on it, gave it back to him, and they whooping him in Vietnam. <laughs> now, what do you think? We who are Africans, we who are so strong, dope? Man, we're going to give him that dope in no time at all. Take it. And when he come with it, we look at him and laugh. We'll be selling it to him. Historically. The Chinese did it. You think we can't do it? What do you think, brother? Ron Hayes. Hmm? Ron Hayes. I said, what do you think? Oh, I said, you think? I hear you. I hear you. You think we can do it? Uh-huh. What do you think, sister? I think so. I know so. I know so. So since I know that, I ain't worried about that. But I'm pushing the positive. Yeah, man, he beat up the white man. Sure enough, did. So we can beat them. We can beat them. I basically got the same, felt the same way about Superfly as you did. But then it was calling my attention all the things that's in between. Right. Like uh, the children, the kids that are Correct. getting hung up there and not ready to finish. I understand that. I understand that. But Superfly is a reality. Superfly is a reality. We're not strong enough to control our media yet. We're getting there, but we're not strong enough. So Superfly is a reality. <coughs> now, there are two ways we can deal with the reality. A couple of us can go and say, all right, we don't want this movie in here, and pull out guns. You, you can do that. Of course, I can get you get enough, show enough Bogart brothers ready to go do that. You can do it. But that's not the proper way. And that's not the proper way for many reasons, because you have already assumed a priority that this is not good for the people. And you can't make that assumption. The people got to make it themselves or let them see it. 
But while they're seeing it, your job is to push the contradictions for them, help them clarify it, show it to them. Then once they see it, then we'll see if they come home. Then if they, if they follow this line, then we know this is the line our people want. We can never assume a priority that this is no good for the people. Give them a chance. Let them see it. Let them see it. Because it's a reality. We can't stop it now. But I'm willing to bet you that uh, Superfly and all those things are going to be running out pretty soon. They're going to be running out pretty soon. Of course, people are talking about them very negatively. The most vocal segment of the community is negative. The most vocal segment. Not the majority of the community. Understand what I'm saying? Not the majority, but the most vocal. The most vocal. I want to ask, uh, uh, in terms of Uh, that is good? <coughs> well, well, whose airways is it? The airways belong to the people. Yeah, so does it. <laughs> whose airways is it, Rob? What are you supposed to do? All right. Uh, uh, when, uh, 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 when I'm thinking in terms of uh, uh, when he's a brother, uh, supposed to be, mm -hmm. and, and uh, 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 when the least that you can do is what is that some guy can give us uh, a direction. I hear you. I agree with you. I said, uh, 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 what I'm saying, uh, what, uh, uh, do you agree that he should say that vocally? Or? I don't agree that he should. I don't agree. I certainly don't. I certainly don't. But what I'm saying is that there is a reality. There is the, the, the picture. And since people are going to see it, instead of saying it's all negative, say, well, there's one positive thing about the flick, man. You can beat Whitey and walk away. And Whitey gonna pull the flick off the movie himself. He gonna, he gonna pull it out. He gonna pull it out. He gonna pull Superfly out when you say, yeah, I think there's something positive about it. The fact is that he beat the white man. He beat the white cop who was putting dope in the black community and walked away and drove away in his hog. Yeah. Does the fact that uh, this brother is saying that the, the flick is cool when the majority of the community is saying it's bad, heighten the contradictions? Of course. Eliminate yes. Of course, of course, of course, of course. And if you know that you're supposed to collect the positive and you know the positive is going to defeat the negative anyway, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You just keep getting up because it's going to be collected. It's going to be collected. The work that Marcus Garvey did ain't left, uh, ain't left. we're going to collect it. It's going to be collected. The work that Malcolm did, it's going to be collected. It's got to be collected. Understand? They were just throwing seeds. Denmark Fessy, we're going to collect it. It's going to be collected. Do you feel the black people in this country are moving toward a positive goal as uh, during this period of time after the period in the 60s? Yes, I think, we're, I think that we're moving very, very fast. But I think that people are not analyzing it. That's all. Very funny, you know. <laughs> My people are very funny people. Look here, man. When I was chairman of Snake, I was always on TV, you know? Man, you always on TV. You ain't doing nothing. You always on TV. You ain't doing nothing. All right, man, on, brother, I got to do some work here. When I get through with this, I'm going to do some real work, all right? But let me run for a while. And when I get finished, I go away. Hey, man, you ain't doing nothing. I don't see you on TV. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of us do have the TV complex, whether we want to admit it or not. If we don't see it on TV, nothing being done. And since he knows that, all he shows on TV is division. Can you dig him? <laughs> That's all he shows, man. He broadcasts televisions into your house divisions. And since you're used to television and television prone, when you time you see it, oh, man, ain't nothing happening. Oh, man, there's been a whole lot happening. He can't even televise what's been happening. The desire for unity. 
in our community, not only on a national basis, but on an international basis, is more intense this year than it was last year, and will be more intense next year than it is this year. That's a fact. The desire for unity among the masses of our people is more intense. Is more intense. Of course, the structures are factionalized. They're divided. But the desire among the masses for unity is more intense. No one can deny that. No one can deny that. Not only on a national basis, but on an international basis. Africa, the Caribbean, South America, into America. The desire is more intense. Is that a whole lot of work, brother, since the 60s? That's a whole lot. That's good, my brother. Now, the people get political consciousness by how? By heightening the contradictions. Have these people heightened the contradictions? Thus, the people have benefited. They have learned. Thus, today, it's going to take a slick opportunist to fool the people, because so many have tried. So many have tried. And the people really loved them, man. As soon as they came up, they ran to it. Whichever one it was, man, they were running to it, because they really wanted something. Yes, sir? And even today, it's much harder, man. They don't even know how to come out of the corner, because the people hip to them. They have educated the people. Everything the white boy tried to do to divide us has, in fact, worked against us and unified us. Hey, man, please, I don't want to do this one on TV. Just this little part. You have to cut it. I'm sorry. All right? I don't want this public. OK? After you can come back to it. Let's analyze among ourselves. Among well, you can just cut it off. I take your word you cut it off. I know you won't jive me.